The Fox 2 problem solvers are about to expose a shady backroom deal that's costing taxpayers millions. It involves a warehouse that the Detroit Police Department is leasing from a guy who has heavy City Hall connections. His problem solver, Scott Lewis. Scott? Hugh and Monica, I get a lot of complaints from business owners who tell me they just can't get contracts in the city of Detroit. Too many inside deals, they tell me. Too often, folks with connections get the contracts. The little guys get locked out and the taxpayers lose. The deal I'm about to expose looks like one of those. Mayor Ken Cockrell got a round of applause when he promised to create a level playing field for companies wanting to do business in Detroit. A playing field where everyone is not only free to compete, but also free to compete equally. If the mayor is serious about weeding out favoritism, this guy would be a good place to start. Gaspar Fiore, a multimillionaire who's made a fortune in towing and real estate. Fiore has the golden touch when it comes to winning city contracts. His competitors complain he always seems to have the inside track. It's amazing how Gaspar Fiore always knows what's going to happen before it happens. And, and has privy to all the information that no other, none of us other towing companies have. Gasper Fiore owns seven towing companies with city contracts, controlling nearly a quarter of the lucrative police towing business. City rules save one contract per company. Fiore got around that rule by buying up companies with existing towing contracts, and the city let him get away with it. There's no reason that one man should make all the money and monopolize the towing industry while everyone else here is struggling and, and going under. You know, it's not right. And now the problem solvers are about to expose what looks like another case of favoritism on a Gasper Fiore deal. A contract awarded to Fiore for this building at 2121 Fort Street. The city's leasing the place to store cars, confiscated by police and drug and prostitution stings. What should make you mad is the price, $70,000 a month. Seventy grand a month to store cars? That's almost $900,000 a year. Several experts on commercial real estate told me that's almost double the going rate for warehouse space in Detroit. And the city is using federal and state money to pay for it, so we're all picking up the tab. Why would the city give such a sweet deal to Gaspar Fiore? Maybe because he has friends in high places? Friends like Deputy Chief John Clark? Do you think that John Clark gives him his juice in the police department? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Along with uh, a lot of other officials. I think it goes a lot higher than that. I'll tell you how John Clark fits into the picture in a minute. Right now, more on the shady warehouse deal. A few months back, I got a tip that the city was paying Gaspar Fiore an outrageous amount of money to lease this building. I started poking around and found the deal published in the Detroit Legal News. Sure enough, it was 70 grand a month, more than 4 million bucks over five years for a warehouse. I went to work to find out how this deal went down. I wanted to know if they put this thing up for bids as they're supposed to and whether anybody was offering a cheaper price. You know, it took me months of digging and prying and prodding, but I finally got to the bottom of it. And what I found stinks to high heaven. I discovered the city had two other bids on the warehouse deal, and they were both cheaper than Fiore's place. A lot cheaper. Remember, the city is paying 70 grand a month for Fiore's warehouse. According to the bids I uncovered, they could have gotten a building in this complex for 37000 a month, and this building for 44000 Fiore's bid did offer a few extras, but the experts told me the price is still way out of line. And come on, there's a glut of warehouse space out there. You know what the economy's like. There are a lot of places they could have gotten deals on. Why did they have to give Fiore top dollar? And who signed this deal for the police department? A civilian deputy chief named John Clark, Gaspar Fiore's longtime pal. Clark says he didn't negotiate the lease, he only signed it. But Clark has taken care of his buddy in the past. Fiore also leases this building to the police department. In this 2003 report, Auditor General Joe Harris said Fiore was overcharging the city on this building by a million bucks. The contract was awarded without competitive bids, and the lease was signed by none other than Deputy Chief John Clark. And now another shady deal on this building? That's outrageous. I gathered up all the paperwork I uncovered on the Fort Street deal and hand-delivered it to Joe Harris at City Hall. He's now the city's chief financial officer. Here's what Harris says about the Fort Street deal. Seems to be just another perfectly legal scam. These guys are good. They've been doing the same thing for years. They know the ropes. Obviously, the city needs to get rid of some bad apples. One has to wonder whether they've all been identified. Joe Harris's audits of the police towing business were so critical of John Clark, he wound up losing his job. 
In August of 2004, Chief Elaboli Cummings told auditors Clark had been relieved of his duties and retired. Well, get this. People in the towing business tell me that Clark left the police department and went to work for Fiore's real estate company. A couple years ago, he was hired back to the same job he was kicked out of in the police department. Once he was back in the saddle, Clark signed off on that sweetheart deal on Fiore's Fort Street warehouse. By the way, if this guy Gasper Fiore looks familiar, there's a reason. Come outside a minute, I can talk to you about the car. The problem solvers busted his chops a few months back. I found out Fiore had given Councilwoman Monica Conyers a super deal on a car for her kid. He swapped a low-mileage Chrysler for her high-mileage SUV that had been wrecked in an accident, just as his towing contracts were coming up for new bids. And the car Fiore gave to Conyers, practically for free, a cherry Chrysler sedan driven by a little old lady, John Clark's mother-in-law. We asked Gasper Fiore for an interview. He said he'd have his lawyer contact us, and we've never heard another word. Deputy Chief Clark ignored several requests for an on-camera interview, so I paid him an unannounced visit on the street last Friday. Hey, John. God, I need to talk to you about that Fort Street warehouse. Yeah, we'll set something up with uh, James Tate. Well, I'd rather talk to you because you signed the lease, and Fiore is your friend. You know, it looks like you did a favor for your buddy. You know, we had a couple experts look at the lease, and they said it's like double the going rate for warehouse space. Is that true? Did you work for Fiore? Just hours before our story was set to air, Clark called and requested an on-camera interview. He says the warehouse deal was put together by an outside consultant. He relied on that company to get the best deal for the city, and he says he thinks Fiore's deal was the best. We've got a lot of leases that we work with. So when one of the benefits to the bargain of the city is when you've got a consultant, who you're paying to do this, you, you act on their recommendation. Gasper is a friend of mine. I'm not going dis- to dispute that. But the, uh, the business of the city is the business of the city. So it isn't like John Clark is sitting in the police department signing leases that you know, the next month go into effect. Those leases don't go into effect until they're ultimately approved by city council. Something is pretty fishy here. First of all, the two lower bids were not even in the city's files. Secondly, we talked to a top manager at the consulting company. He described this as an under-the-table deal. He said his company started working on the warehouse project, but the employee assigned to it told them the deal was dead and then left the firm. He says he has no idea the warehouse deal went down until we called him, and his company was never paid a commission. It's got something that's in right. You have to wonder what the former mayor, the current mayor, and the city council have to say about this report. Yes, we'll have to keep following there, and the question is, did the city council really know what they were voting on? Yeah, we'll have to see. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Scott.